All right. Hello, everybody. Good to see you all. Uh, those of you that have your cameras on, but good to just see the names. Thank you for joining us here today. Happy, um, unfortunately, 9-11, right? So um, with that, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is just you know, pay some respect to those whose lives we've lost on this day 23 years ago now. So for all of you that have lost somebody, you know, truly, truly sorry for your loss. And um, just wanted to pay some respect to, to those. We are here today, you're here to talk about ways to own a home in 2024 um, and still be able to do so or the year beyond. So if you're here, I'm guessing that be means you're, it's either because you are interested in it yourself or you're somehow helping people in, in that capacity. Um, if you have a chance and you want to type into the chat for me, what you're, if there's anything in particular that you're hoping to get out of today's session, we'd be happy to see if what we can do to help um, help you on that path, okay? But thank you again for all being here. I, we might have some people trickling in, but they'll come in as they do. Um, so with that, let's just hop right in, okay? So, oops, oops, sorry, here we go. All right, so first let me start with, um, I know some of you here and I don't know everybody, so let me just tell you a little bit about who I am so that you've got that in your background. And a uh, couple of things, if someone can either put into the chat, can you see me, hear me okay, and can you see the screen okay? Thank you, Millie. <laughs> okay, great. Appreciate it. All right. So, so let's see. So a little bit about me. Um, I've been doing this for 20 years now. This is my 20th year in this business, which is kind of crazy because I still sometimes feel like I just got in. Um, and, and that's because my previous career was I was a doctor of pharmacy and worked at Johnson and Johnson before this. So a whole shift for me. And it's been 20 years at this point. So this is what I do, and I love what I do. I've had the pleasure of serving, you know, uh, over 900 families as I was doing the math on it. Um, have gone on and done some additional certifications and things like that. So I'm a certified mortgage planning specialist, and all of that is because I just have a true passion for really making a difference in people's lives and helping them with not just a mortgage, but in making sound decisions and then using that as a tool to really help propel that financial trajectory and grow their wealth. Um, and I do happen to be uh, a proud mom of two on a personal level. And, uh, and my goal is really just to help others shine bright in their life. I'm popping. If you have any questions, just put them into the chat for me. Um, I am licensed in 48 States, by the way. So if you are here coming in from another state, no problem. We can help you in every state for now, except New York and Hawaii. Uh, Hawaii. Yeah. All right. So what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk, you're here because you have some interest, something pulling you into home ownership. You're either looking to buy or, or maybe your first home, maybe it's a move up home, maybe it's an investment property. Um, and I know we have some agents on the phone as well who want to educate themselves so they can be a better resource for their clients. No matter what specific reason that you have for being here, uh, you believe that real estate is worth exploring. And my intent is that you find clarity here to help you make an informed and educated decision. We're not gonna go through the basics, like what credit scores you need, what types of programs are available. That's gonna vary so much from individual to individual. And if I shared some basic information with you on that, you'll be left wondering what that really means to you. You'll have an opportunity at the end of this to schedule a one-on-one -on -one consultation and we can go through the specifics of your situation. But today we're going to focus on how to navigate the home buying process. We're gonna talk about what drives mortgage rates. Is it a good time to buy a home? And what data should I consider in deciding on whether it's a good time or not? And um, you'll wanna to stay to the end because at the end, I do have a gift for those of you that are here. Um, so hang tight and we'll get you a little something at the end. So let's kick off with the home buying process, okay? Let's talk about what that looks like. So we're gonna start with a little roadmap to, to figure out what the home buying process is. First is the discovery call, okay? That's a call that you should be having with your lender and your real estate agent to figure out what it is that you're trying to accomplish, what your goals are, and understanding your specific situation and needs. And then you would move into a pre-approval consultation with your lender to identify the options that are available to you specifically. Then you go out and you house hunt. 
after you're starting to house hunt, you're going to find a home and the goal is going to be to put an offer in and get that, have it beat out other offers. And when you do, you're going to sign a contract and then you're going to move into something that we call a contract meeting, which is let's go through the specifics of this particular home for which you signed an offer. Uh, and then you go into attorney review if you're in the part of New Jersey or any use as an attorney. Um, and then you go into the mortgage underwriting. And through the mortgage underwriting process, as you get through that part, then you're going to sign the, the documents and get the keys to your home. And then after that begins the real fun, which is the your goal into becoming a successful homeowner and the financial freedom journey gets on its way then. So that's an overview of the process. So let's talk about who you need on your team to get started with that, right? And it's really important to carefully select the team that's going to help you make this dream. Again, whether it be your first or whether it be your second home, a vacation home, an investment property, either way, it's something that you've likely been thinking about for some time. So you wanna have the right people on your team. So I'd encourage you to think about what skills and traits are important to you in a service professional, like what matters to you. Think about that, read their individual reviews, not just that for their company, like as clients have to say about them, what do people who have worked with them have to say, so that you can get a sense of whether those are the things that are important to you. Uh, and then you also want to um, look at, for partners that are gonna help you, not just as a transaction, but really focus on helping add value to your life long after the closing happens. And ideally you're getting a really strong referral, okay? The people that you need throughout um, this home buying journey that you're going to be working with directly will be your lender, your real estate agent, your attorney, um, a home inspector, a title insurance agent, and a home insurance agent. Now, if you're thinking, uh, I don't know all these people, right? Where am I going to find all those people? You don't have to worry about it. Um, as long as you've got the, the place to really start, I think the, uh, the first place to start is actually with the lender. Because if you don't know your numbers, there's no point going out and looking at something. But a lot of people will often start with the real estate agent. So either of those two are a great place to start. Um, and they're going to likely be able to introduce you to everybody else that you'll need so that you're in trusted good hands throughout this process. OK, so now you've got your dream team assembled. Um, and really, again, you just need the first two, the lender and the real estate agent to get started. The other people will come as you once you find a home. So, but how, what are you going to do when, once you've got your team? How do you know you want to make good informed decisions, right? Educated decisions. And how do you do that? Well, you use data to do that, right? So ideally you are being able to look at something that like this, if you can see my screen, um, where it's showing you, what are you approved for? What's the maximum that you can do so that you know what your upper limit is at that which a lender will give you money. Now, Oftentimes, that will be different from how much you actually want to spend because there's a lot of things that the mortgage process takes in, does not take into account, I should say, um, like expenses that don't show up on your credit report. If you've got a child in preschool, it's not going to take those into account. And so you may not be ready to spend as much as the mortgage company says you're approved for. And usually in that initial consultation and that dreams and goals call, you would have had that conversation with your lender so they know what your target payment is. And then you might've set a reach payment. Like if I love the house and it needs everything of my dreams, then I'd be willing to stretch. So ideally you're able to understand what does that mean and what purchase prices get you to those payments, okay? Um, as an estimate. So that would be a first place to be able to then go out and start house hunting. And then as you're out house hunting, now you've seen a house that you like, let's say it's listed for 495. It's listed for 495, but there's, been a lot of activity in the open house. The listing agent is telling you that there's multiple bids on the home. Your agent's telling you maybe you should bid a little bit higher on this house. So let's say in this case, it's 525. So you want to be able to know what does that mean to your bottom line? Because you're not paying 495 or 525 unless you're buying this house in all cash. What you're really paying is the monthly payment and the cash to close. And those are the numbers that you need to know that are associated with the price. So as you see here, a table like this will give you that information. And then in this table, we also put in like, hey, you were targeting a payment of 4472. We initially thought that 520 was a good place to go. But you can see, and it's probably because of taxes or, you know, that this payment's coming out to 4514. 
So it's a little bit higher than that target payment. Am I okay with that or not is what you should be evaluating for yourself. And then depending on whether, you know, you are comfortable with this payment, then you can go forward and put that offer in that's going to give you a better chance of offer acceptance. But there's other things that aside from being ready and fully knowing your numbers that you can do to help increase your chance of offer acceptance. Now I've had some people, and I don't know if anyone on here is in that situation where you are frustrated, you've been putting in offers and they're getting rejected and it's leaving you thinking that maybe I don't wanna go through this process. If so, if you guys, you know, feel free to pop it into the chat if you, or if you have clients that have been in that stage. Um, but we are hearing that often. So what are we doing about that then, right? Well, you wanna be ready so that you are always a step ahead of any other potential buyer that's going to bid on your home that you want, right? Now, the seller, generally concerned with a couple of things. One of those things is obviously the price of the home, right? They want a good price for the home. But the other piece that they're concerned about that people don't always take into account is they're concerned about making sure that will you as a buyer get to closing or not? So what is my confidence level? What is the likelihood I get to closing? I was just speaking with an agent about an hour ago who was telling me that so many deals are falling out of contract. So if you can give the seller and their agent confidence that yours is not one that's going to fall out of contract, you're going to have a better opportunity to win a bid and maybe not even at the highest price, okay? So how you can do that is make sure you've got an entire team selling your offer to the listing agent, that you have, um, that you're getting yourself fully underwritten, okay? Getting yourself fully underwritten is a way to help you distinguish yourself from the competition. You want to be armed with tools that help you look as good as cash, even if you have to sell your current home. There's different strategies that people don't always know about and too many for me to go into here in specifics, um, but there are ways that you can do that. And we'll give you an opportunity, by the way, at the end to schedule a consultation. So if you've got more specific things that you want for your individual, we can certainly go through them at the end, okay, or in, in that one-on-one. -on -one. But, but yeah, just know that there are opportunities to help you do that. And they can only help you as far as looking better when it comes to the opportunity to get your offer accepted. The other thing is also um, you want to be able to know that you've got resources to help you if, there, if the property isn't a hot property, right? Because there's different strategies that one would use when we've got a property where there's lines out the open house and, you know, tons of offers on the property, but there's a different way to win if the house has been sitting on the pro on the market for a little bit, it's perfect for you, but maybe not everybody else. So now we have some opportunity to negotiate with the seller. And most people think the only thing to do is to lower the price. But there's other ways that you can negotiate that actually end up keeping more money in your pocket than that. And so being ready with strategies like that, and by the way, looking better to the seller. So it makes it more appealing to the seller too. So um, knowing that there's these different things are different ways that you can focus on getting an offer accepted. Hop into the chat if you've got any questions so far, um, but that's a little bit about the process getting to an accepted offer, okay? So now the question is, should I buy real estate now? Is this a good time to buy a home? Well, let's go through a couple of things. I've got a couple of things on here for those who don't own a home yet, okay? If you've never owned a home, then these are just some reasons that typically people would buy a home. And I'm sure one of those might, or a couple of those are probably the reason that brought you here today. But here's something that's super eye-opening, I thought, if you are somebody who's renting. And if you're a homeowner, hang with me for just another minute, I'll get through this and we'll get into the stuff that applies to everybody. Um, but if you are renting, and actually, if you're a homeowner, this is something you can share with your friends and family that maybe not are homeowners that are still renting. Um, if you are able and qualified to be able to own a home, you can increase your net worth significantly. Look at the difference in net worth from somebody who owns a home and somebody that does it and how it's continued to go up and up over the years. And so again, if you're renting currently, let's say at 3000 a month, and if it costs you more to own a home, let's say 4,700 a month, well, look at this in 60 months, which is five years, the amount of rent that you would have paid is over 200,000. If you were to own a home, you would have paid 33,000 into the principal of your own home 
that you're building. And in that next chart here, the net worth shows that your net worth would have grown to over 200,000. So your equity in the property continues to grow as you own a home versus renting a home. So for those that are trying to figure out if I should buy or not, here's some data that can help you. But now more general information. Buy now or wait, right? This is a chart that shows data from 1942 on home appreciation rates in the in United States. And you can see it's for every year. And then on the right-hand side, you have the information that shows you the, here, right here, the totals for the decades. And so you'll see 74 out of these um, 82 years, there was positive in appreciation in the market. And seven years, it was negative. And one year, it stayed flat. And I'll just share a little story with you. I bought my house in 2005, December 31st, 2005, to be very specific. Look at the appreciation rates leading up to when I bought my house. And look at what happened after I bought my house, but right after. So if you see, I still own that home. In, in the years following, I still have massive equity and appreciation on my home. So, you know, people are, I've heard some concerns about should I buy and the rates, you know, I mean, the home prices may tumble. So if you're, if you're not looking at it for just a year or two, based on this chart, you've got good odds, 74 out of 82 years where the home prices have actually gone up, okay? And so, and specifically, I'll show you that's what's happened in the past. But here's a forecast of what's happened. And this is some data that was just recently published. I think I just pulled it like within the past week. Um, and it's from Fannie Mae and Pulse Economics, right? And what it shows in the top box is that they're saying that the mean home appreciation rate is expected to be 4.73% in 2024. The most optimistic of the bunch say six and the most pessimistic say 4%. And so if it's a $500,000 home, that's an increase of $20,000. And that's in one year, okay? And over the next five years, that same home, the most pessimistic says it'll increase only 40,000, whereas the most optimistic thinks it could go up to 160 with the mean being 100. But you'll notice that no matter how you slice it, even the most pessimistic are not calling for a decline in home prices. They're all calling for some sort of incline in home prices. And this is national data. So what if we look at it locally? So if we're looking at the data locally, um, what you see here is that it's showing a home price appreciation still going up. And in that first year, it still goes up by about 20 some thousand. It's similar to the number that was on the other one. And if we look at it, I was curious for myself, so I thought maybe you would be too. But you know, if you're thinking, what if I wait a couple more months, right? And if you do that, you'll see that if I take that annual appreciation and I divide it by 12 to figure out my appreciation is per month, it's $1,940 per month that I could either be gaining or losing if I don't buy um, this year, right? So just to give you some perspective, and this is at the local, I pulled it for Middlesex County, which is where I live. We can pull this data for whatever area you know, you're in. Um, and we can certainly do that for you. Just let us know and we can, you know, go through that. And we do this for everybody in our consultations as well. Can you it? Oh, if you're not on mute, if you don't mind muting yourself, that would be great. Um, so let's look at mortgage rates, okay? And, and by the way, you guys, again, pop in questions. I can't see your faces. So hard for me to tell if uh, anyone's even listening. <laughs> I hope you are. Um, but let's talk about mortgage rates here, okay? So that's the other thing that I get asked about a lot. Should I wait? Are the rates going to come down? And if the rates come down, does it make sense for me to buy a home today or is it better for me to wait? So let's have a look at that, okay? So first I wanted to share with you this question I get a lot too about what actually impacts mortgage rates. It's been in the lose a lot. So this is a high level 101 on understanding money mortgage and the bond market okay so if you're hearing about a rate of 6.5 percent that means that the mortgage company is getting about 0.5 fannie mae or freddie mac is getting 0.5 and the bond investor it started with here is a 5.5 okay so it actually i kind of went backwards but really it goes this way 
It starts with whatever this bond is at. And then Fannie Mae takes a little piece. Mortgage companies take a little piece. And then you get a number, okay? So this number here drives everything else because these are pretty constant numbers industry-wide, okay? So really it's this that drives it. And so what we have to follow is what impacts are here on the mortgage bond, which is called the mortgage-backed security that are driving the mortgage rates, okay? And so it's three big economic reports and areas that really impact mortgage rates. Jobs reports, and that's why you probably heard of some positive favorability last week. It was because a jobs report came out that was showing weakness. That's why the Fed kind of doubled down and said, yes, we are going to cut the Fed funds rate uh, next week. There's the GDP, and then there's inflation, okay? Those are the three major drivers and that are going to impact inflate, uh, the mortgage rates. Now, as a general rule of thumb, let me share with you a couple of quick things because you might not remember every little piece of what I'm saying here, but if you remember this, good news in the economy means that mortgage rates are probably gonna go up. Bad news in the economy means mortgage rates will go down, okay? So a weak jobs market, means mortgage rates will go down. And that's part of what's driving this right now. So keep that in mind is that that's the impact that you'll see. And I obviously I gave you a very condensed version of what you know you could do a whole dissertation on, but uh, but that's just high level of what, what how it drives it. And to give you some idea, this is what the bond chart looks like. This is called mortgage-backed security is the name of the bond. And it has an inverse relationship to mortgage rates. So if you see this go up, that means rates are coming down. If you see this go down, it means rates are coming up, okay? So when you see this here, just to give you some perspective, and people have been saying, hey, rates are getting better, rates are getting better. Yes, rates have been getting better. But take a look at this chart, okay? Over here is December, and we can see we kind of just hit it again in August, right? So rates have been coming up, but they're just coming, they just came back up to where December is, and only in this month recently, have we started getting beyond where we were at that December time point of seeing some, and, and again, lowering is what I mean by getting better, right? Because up means down as far as the rate translation. So this is what I study all day long. I'm a student of the financial markets. I'm a little bit of a geek about it, but this helps me give clients some good advice about what's going on and what we're expecting. And despite studying this, there's really three things that can happen to rates. <laughs> They can either go down, they can go up, and they can stay the same, right? So all of that is going to, there's a lot, all those reports are going to be what drive this. As you know, probably all the predictions are saying that the rates will likely go down, okay? So what happens if the rates go down? Let's walk through an example, okay? So if rates go down, okay, let's assume that you are buying a $500,000 home and your monthly payment is going to be $38.71. You're putting 10% down, okay? And, and we're at 6.5 rate, okay? And so your monthly payment is going to be $38.71. If the rates go down, okay, and you wait a year to buy because you want to wait for the rates to go down, if we think back to that chart that I shared earlier about the home prices and what, what's forecasted to happen to it, if you remember one year later, the most pessimistic, like the, the worst case scenario said it would go up 20,000, okay? So if it goes up 20,000, rates go down half a percent, you look at that payment difference, it's a dollar less to buy a year from now, okay? So it would cost you a dollar less because even though the rate is down, the price of the home went up. And so we could risk, right? The, the chance of waiting to see if the rates go down and see what happens if the market price, and remember, this is the pessimistic. So if there's an even more optimistic view happens, well, then you'd end up spending less money, right? So so there's like, it, it you would have, I'm sorry, not less money, your payment would be even higher than this. And you'd end up having a higher monthly payment than what you could have at the higher rate. Um, there. And of course, you can't go back and refinance the price of the house, but as long as you keep kept yourself mortgage ready, you can always refinance the, the interest rate. But let's say we wait even more than a year, just for giggles, right? Let's say we decide we're going to wait for five years, okay? And if you remember, the most pessimistic of choices had 
in uh, the price of the home up $40,000. And let's say the rates continue to go down. Five years later, we're down to 5%. Um, and that's the lowest number I've seen on any forecast. So that's why I use that number. Then you'll see that the monthly payment in this case is actually going to be $160 less. So by waiting five years, you may pay $160 less, even though the price of the home has gone up, okay? Um, now, all that's talking about is a monthly payment. Of course, what this doesn't show is what happens to what you may have lost out on in appreciation, number one, but also in what you've spent in rent, if that's what you're doing, right? Um, but let's say that the best case as far as home prices happens, and the, or, or no, the median, sorry, the median was that the price home prices go up 100,000. So if home prices go up $100,000 and the rates come down 5%, well, you're paying about you know $150 more per month for that very same home, okay? But imagine, imagine you bought that home today at 500,000 in five years or in one year, the rate's down. And instead of this, it's only 500,000. So your payment is even lower. And in five years, you're again, and the payment's even lower. So now you've got 100,000 in equity or 20 and 40,000 in equity plus that lower payment. So some food for thought, right, really is that does it really make sense to wait for something which you actually have zero control over, by the way, right? We can't control those rates. What we can control, though, is what we do to, right? We can control that part of the equation is like, you know, if you qualify for a home today and you could make this payment and you have the cash to close, and this is just an example with 10%. Of course, the minimum required is three, three and a half percent, right? But let's just say that's what you did. Well, if you know that it works for you today, are you willing to risk to see how it goes to not buy and see what happens afterwards? Or do you want to get what you know is the sure money in the pocket, if you will, because all those appreciation charts that I showed you say that the home, the values are going to appreciate. There's a very good history. Remember 74 out of the last 82 years, home prices have appreciated. So the odds are in your favor that home prices go up. There's not anybody that I've met that bought a home in the past couple of years. I and mean, then, you know, it was a hot market with people paying high who regret their decision to own a home. But what I do hear is people who regret their decision not to get in and call me and say, oh, I should have really bought two years ago. So you could, you know, take that risk, but you might end up in that boat. And um, so I'm going to bring you back to this chart of the home buying process. So where you are is right now at the beginning, right? So if you're at the beginning, your first step would be to do that discovery call. And listen, if you're thinking about buying your next home anytime in the near future, like it's better that you talk to me. I'd rather you speak to me five years too early than a day too late because you will benefit more by having someone on your side to guide you through that process earlier in the process rather than missing out and having it be a day too late where there's things that you missed. So if you would like to go ahead and schedule an individual consultation, you can scan this QR code. This will give, take you right to my calendar and I'm happy to talk about your individual situation and figure out what your situation, you know, what, what's right for you. There's no one answer. And listen, anyone in the mortgage business that gives you a yes, you should, or a no, you shouldn't, or a very black and white answer, I wouldn't trust, quite frankly, because I think the answer to every financial question is it depends. It depends on so many things and so many things that are specific to you. And so that's what this consultation would be about. So if you don't want to have that feeling of I missed out, then, you know, you're welcome to take advantage of this. And I promised you a gift. So we have a free financial app for you. OK, this app is going to prepare you for home ownership. Uh, and if you are a homeowner, because I see some folks that we've had the pleasure of helping in the past that are on here, um, if you're a homeowner already, you can still use this app because it'll help you maintain your home at a high level. And so you can use it before, after, and during you know, your home buying journey. So I, I can send that over to you after we're done here. I'll send it with the follow-up notes. Um, and I can send you a link to this presentation if you'd like, just let me know, okay? But I actually did something else too. So if you are looking to purchase a home in 2024, 2025, 
um, we'll get we'll cover the cost of your appraisal for you. We really, really want to focus on helping people take advantage of the incredible opportunity that real estate is presenting right now for you. So, and, you know, willing to do what we can to help you make that happen. So feel free to uh, just message me and we will make sure that you get these gifts so that you can take advantage of them. And I'm going to share with you once more this consultation. So feel free to go ahead and scan that and find a time that works for you. Um, and if you have any trouble, all my contacts